send their whole check playing the lottery. Amen, somebody. That's when they look at money. But when it comes down to looking at something that will do you far more than money, because one of these days you're going to put the money down, you're going to let it go. And you hope to be able to hold the hand of God. And he's made it so that you can do that. Come on, choir. Tell them one more time that we can be able to worship him. Verse 1. 
And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. When, and when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins of peace. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and said unto him, Every man in the beginning do set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. Is that about how your Bible reads? Thus I have read the King James Version of John the second chapter verse 1 through 11 in an order of blessing to the hearer, to the reader, but above all to the doers of his written word. I want to preach from a topic and two subtopics. The topic is, he still turned water into wine. He still turned water into wine. And the subtitles would be, bring what you have and I'll fix it. Bring what you have and I'll fix it. And the other subtitle is, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. You may be seated in this place. My brothers and sisters, many of us start life. And sometimes we think we know what the best is all about. Now we got a witness in here. It often starts in our teenage years a lot of times. We, we, we'll tell our parents, y'all just old fashioned. Y'all don't know nothing. Amen. We'll tell them that they don't understand. This is new stuff here. And the Bible tells you plainly if you just read, there's nothing new under the sun. Amen. They may call it something new now, but it's something that your mother and father, they knew about a lot of these different things. But if you don't watch it, some of us will look at things in life and we'll just want things. We'll want cars. Amen, somebody. We'll turn around and we want this car. TV helps us with a lot of things that we want. If you look at TV, you may end up being like my little three-year-old daughter, Trinity. When she looks at TV, sometimes the commercial come on, Daddy, I want that, Daddy, I want that, Daddy, I want that. And some of us live our lives the same way, just wanting things. And we think the more things we get, the better off we'll be. And you know, as soon as you get that thing, sometime later on, you'll look out in that storage house and you'll see that thing that you just used to have to have. Amen, somebody. You'll look in the garage and that thing that you just had to go buy, slice it, dice it, and order it, amen. And you get two for the price of one right now, amen, somebody. And you had to order one for you and your friend and neither one of y'all can find it now, amen. But you, some people, they just like things, and they got houses. They want to get a house. You know, nowadays, I looked on Forbes magazine, 
And uh, a couple of years back, it was so depressing, I ain't looked no more. It said, uh, I looked at what I was making and what me and my wife were bringing in, and when we looked at our status, I thought we were going to be somewhere around at least low middle class or middle middle, somewhere around in there. But what it said, Minister Robinson, is that we're poor upper class. Amen? <laughs> Because in order to be middle, middle class, you gotta have at least a house here and at least a summer home. And if not a summer home, you gotta have a summer and a winter home. They bad somebody. And we ain't talking about the rich. We're just talking about just regular stuff. And then some people like clothes. I know some, they know when I go to uh, conferences and conventions, sometimes I look around and I see folks that have so many clothes. It's, 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 one, it's one pastor, he comes in in the morning, he dressed one way. And he's got a suit on, matching watch, amen, matching rings, I mean, he just got it going on. After lunch, he changed out, and he's got to get another color, you know what I mean. So he, everybody will know that he's shaved. It's after lunch now. Then when he come in the evening, sure enough, he doesn't change even all the way down to the shoes. Amen. Some people, it's just things in their lives. And some people, they look to people. That's what their thing is. They, they, sometimes they don't have many of those things that I mentioned, but they just look at people and they look at their lifestyle. Years ago, there was a show called A Lifestyle of the Rich and Famous. Anybody remember hearing about that? And you know, we just look at that stuff, and if you don't watch it, you'll want everything they got. Not just a car, but a car stable. Amen, somebody. And some people just look at looks, and they like looks. Just the way they, some people either love the way they look and they look it in the mirror at themselves or just about the, amen. And some people can't stand the way they look. Now you look at them and you say, my, you, look my, you look my nice and you all right. But they can't see it. So they go to the doctor, they take this shot, that shot, nip here, tuck there. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Spend thousands of dollars trying to nip and tuck and pull and do this and that. And every time you turn around, they're infatuated with looks. Some look at what they have. And because of what they have, they have status and they have all of this and that and the other thing. And some look where they go. Every time you turn around, they're talking about where they're going and where they've been and where they're coming. You know, we just came in from California and we just came in from Nevada and we just did this and we just did that. And every time you turn around, they're talking about where they've been. A lot of times, because they can't be comfortable where they are. Amen? So, and you can get to a place that some people are uh, deal with their articulation and their intelligentsia because they speak so well and so proper and, and people just can admire how they, and all of those things, my brothers and sisters, are fine and well. But I want somebody to know if you do all of this without a relationship with Jesus Christ, it's soon going to run out. You can have a bunch of stuff. Ain't nothing wrong with having stuff, but there is something wrong with stuff having you. And some people got so much stuff that they can't do nothing else because they got all this stuff. But you got to realize that as I go into the text, we have to understand something about the wedding feast. Now, the wedding feast back then was different. You think weddings are expensive now. You sure saw the Jewish wedding back then. It didn't last just one day. These things could last a week or two. And the longer they lasted, the more it seemed as if, you know, you had, you had it really going on as you got into this family. But one thing happened. Notice something. Jesus got invited to the wedding. That means he had some friends. You know, it's amazing when you're supposed to be a Christian and you can't show yourself friendly. Right. Hello, somebody. You ought to have some friends, and there ought to be some good Christian friends. Can I get a witness out here? Jesus was invited. Not only Jesus, but his disciples were invited with him. You know, sometimes people can invite one, but they don't invite everybody that hang with you. In this case, it was some good folk that hung with Jesus, and they were invited to the wedding. Not only that, but Mary, the mother, was invited, and Mary noticed that they ran out of wine. Now, some commentaries will let you understand that when they ran out, it was an embarrassment to run out of wine. you got to understand that this thing was not just an embarrassment of the day. 
It was an embarrassment for life. Understand what was going on during the time. It was an embarrassment for life. You say, why, Reverend? Because any time that that family would be saw out in the public square, and anybody that was at the wedding that saw that they ran out of wine, they would be the ones that would stop and pause and say, don't you know that that's that family that couldn't provide at the wedding. It's a crying shame. And then they would walk off with their nose all up and all proud. And of course the family would walk by with their head down in shame. And it's a crying shame to have to go through that just because you ran out of some wine. Jesus' mother recognized. Many commentaries will say that Jesus was kin to them and she did not want that family to have to go through all that kind of embarrassment. So what she did is she went and told Jesus. You see, you can go and tell somebody, they may run down to the store, and you have a certain kind of wine there, they may have ran down to the store and got some Morgan David, amen, somebody. And that wouldn't be a good thing to do. I know y'all don't know nothing about MB 2020. Hello, somebody. But, 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 so, so she just didn't tell anybody. She told Jesus. And Jesus, when she told Jesus, he said, look, this is not my time. But she knew enough about her son that she told the servants, look, whatever he tell you to do, just do. Just do. And that's what I want you to understand today. Whatever Jesus tells you to do, you just need to do. Sometimes we be trying to make sense, but God does stuff that don't make no sense to us. And he can still bless you real good. What ended up happening is Jesus told them to take the water pots. Now this water pots was normally used for when people come in to wash their hands and to even wash their feet. Because they traveled on those dusty roads. And so you had to have a lot of water there. And so the water pots weren't quite full, but these water pots, I want you to understand, Perkins wasn't no joke. It held about 100 gallons of water. So he told them to fill them all up. So that's the first thing that you got to get. You got to fill it up with what God says fill it up with. Am I making some sense in here today? See, God wants you to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Because of the simple fact that you can go and you can try to fill your life with anything besides what God wants you to fill it with, and it will soon run out. It ain't going to work if you don't do it the way God wants you to do it. Have I got a witness in here? And you've got to understand, my brothers and sisters, that what ended up happening is when he took the wine, to the governor. Didn't say take it to just anybody. Say take it to the governor, the ruler over the wind. And they took it to the one that was in charge of the preparation and they gave him the water that had been turned into wine. Nobody knew that it was wine. They just thought they were taking the water. But some kind of way on the way to doing, you know what I'm saying? On the way to doing what God wanted done, things begin to change. You see, you can go ahead and get the Holy Ghost on inside your life. And it may not look like it's been no change, but on your way, just go on your merry way. You gotta understand, you can go back into the same house, but there's been a change. You can go back to the same job, but there's been a change. When the Lord gets a hold to you, and when somebody else comes and draw out, it won't be the same as it used to be. You gotta understand this, my brothers and sisters. So they went and gave him the wine that had been from turned from water to wine. And when the governor tasted it, he said, normally folks give the best that they have to give at first. And then after that comes the worst. And I stopped by to let somebody know that that's the way the devil like to do you. He likes to give you the best that he's got first. 
Oh, I know she looked good to you. <laughs> but everything that looked good to you ain't good for you. Now I got a witness. And I know that the devil will tell you, break this. And you might feel good for a little while. But after the good, the worst do come. Now I got a witness. Your face should not be. Hell, I got a witness. The worst do come. But after a while, even if you done took the best that the devil had, and now he's trying to kill you because he says, Smoke this, and it'll make you feel good. But after a while, if you keep smoking that, then you're going to develop probably lung cancer. After a while, if you keep drinking that, you're going to get cirrhosis of the liver. But right now, I got some good news for everybody. If you just take what you got, the Lord, he will fix it. Am I right about it? He's still turning water into wine. He can still take your water down by and he can still turn it into wine. Am I right about it? Somebody ought to be able to witness the ruler bearing witness. He didn't know about the change, but the others around did. And he bared witness that what was brought out at last was better than that at first. And I got good news. It don't matter if you are messed up your life at first. You can take what you got to Jesus. How do you know? The songwriter said, I came to Jesus as I was. I was weary. I was worn and sad. But I found in him a resting place. He has made me glad. spiritual wine. It'll make you glad. It'll give you joy. How do you know, Reverend? All you gotta do is make up your mind that you're going to Jesus. It don't matter. I feel like preaching. It don't matter how long you've been down. It don't matter if everybody counted you out. Come here, Bob Bartimaeus. What happened? I was out there begging every day, and all of a sudden, I heard, oh, I heard that Jesus was coming. I threw off my coat, and I ran to try to meet it. I got close enough to where I thought he could hear me. I said, Jesus, oh, Jesus. And when he called, I got good news. He was still able to turn water into wine. Am I right about it? My mother went there blind. That's all the water he had. But the Lord took what he had and took that water. that he was praising the Lord when he left him. And that's what we got to understand. The Christians shouldn't be sitting around like they've been sucking lemons, drinking vinegar. When you got joy, my joy, the joy of the Lord on the inside. You can jump up when things ain't going right. You can bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Am I right about it? Say yeah. Say yeah. When they got the joy, when they got that spiritual, the Lord will bless you for being able to love somebody.
I can't tell you how it's going to turn out. I can just tell you it's going to be all right. Why? Because the thoughts that he has for you are of good and not of evil to prosper you. To bring you, he got an expectation for you. He wants to see you do good. He wants you to be blessed so that you can be a blessing to somebody else. Let us take our time and stand. There could be somebody here under the sound of my voice that came in with just a little bit of water. Good news is he'll fill that water pot that you brought in and turn it from water to wine. He wants to give you the best but it happens in the spirit first. Everything happens in the spirit. And then there's a manifestation in the natural. And if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, that's where it all starts. You have to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. Believe that he died for your sins. And that God raised him from dead and he lives now and forevermore. And when you do that, he'll come in and fill you so that others can draw out from you something that you never had. You'll be able to offer them Jesus. And what a beautiful gift to have this time of the year. When everybody's out trying to run and get gifts, don't miss the gift of Jesus Christ.